I want you guys to stay tuned. We're gonna have some big ups and some big downs on this glove. We're gonna talk about everything, but let's start with the break-in. Aria gloves come ultra stiff, and a lot of people think that stiff equals good. That is actually not true. We're gonna talk more about that soon. Now, although it was a rock, it didn't take a ton of work to get it broken in and game ready. Really, I just went ham on the thing with a five pound weight. I ended up using the hot water treatment, and after like 30 minutes, it was good to go. Now, I'm wearing the glove traditional, and it really is game ready. During the break-in, I noticed I wasn't a huge fan of the shape, so I made sure to work extra hard to kind of shape it the way I want it. Now I like the glove more than before, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm not a huge fan of the general shape. Let me actually explain to you why. The pattern itself is more of a one hinge break in. That's really not my problem. My problem is that the shape of this glove is extremely generic. Likely whoever their glove provider is just said, hey, we can make this glove and they didn't have any specific requests. So this is what they got. In the end, you could break this in with two hinges if you really wanted to like this. But like I was saying, it naturally closes with one hinge a little more like that. It's not whole horrible. Like I was saying, it's just generic. It'd be absolutely wrong for us not to mention the design of this thing. It's just impeccable. I don't think I've ever used that word before. People are always ripping on like, oh, do something besides food. I think that's just haters, you guys. I mean, they're making really cool designs and sure, food is like their niche right now. The people who are hating on this are often just the people who just don't like change. Now, if we're only looking at the design, it is absolutely a 10 out of 10 every time. You don't have to like the way that it looks, but my point is that a lot of effort went into designing it. It's a creative idea. And I generally think that it's good for baseball. I mean, really, no one else out there is making gloves that feel like their designer. That sounds really weird to say, but it's true. Check out the little orange tags on the glove. It's these tiny little details that are going to make a very big difference. And then of course you have like the cone pattern on the glove. You have the sprinkles, the dripping ice cream. The finger pad itself is actually pretty dang cool. Like I said, some people are going to love it and others will absolutely hate it. This might be the most important subject on this glove. We have to talk about the leather. There is a ton of controversy around this glove saying it's bad. It's horrible. Not worth the money. People are saying that Aria is using using cheap leather. I want you guys to know that those rumors are generally true. Stick with me. In no way is this leather like the worst thing in the world, but what it is, is cheap and convenient. The total price on this thing is $420. That's pretty dang expensive, but let me explain. Each little thing that's on this glove costs money. The cone print on the back of the glove, that costs money. Those sprinkles, those cost money. That dripping ice cream, yes, that costs money. It says imagined by X. There's even these weird little logos on the laces. So when you add it all up, yeah, it's getting expensive. Real question is, is it $420 expensive? And I lean toward no. And the main reason that I say that is because of the leather. Aria, this leather is bad enough to where you need to upgrade it ASAP because you guys have caught an incredible amount of tension in a very short amount of time. And if you don't want that to die, you gotta improve this glove. Let's actually go through a few examples of why this leather isn't great. They were having some problems with like the leather busting around the pocket area. So now they have like a reinforced piece of leather around there. Great, that means they're improving the glove. I'm gonna show you guys a picture. This guy has been using this glove for six months. That is a ton of damage for just six months. But it's not just color. That's like raw leather that we're looking at, which is really weird. A simple way of looking at it is like this. The outer layer of the glove is pretty solid. It's gonna hold its color. It looks good. It feels good. But after enough use, you're gonna hit that bare leather that's really raw. And this is gonna be the leather that shows its true quality. I mentioned that it was super stiff, but it broke in quickly. That's kind of proving that it's just really stiff, but it's not super durable quality leather. It was a quick break in, even though it was raw. Hard. Just to be clear, just because a glove breaks in quickly doesn't mean it's going to break down quickly. But in this case, it actually does. We've seen a bunch of other people where their glove is breaking down way too quick and it's just not good. It ultimately has to do with cheap leather. Now we got to step back and actually just update ourselves because we've talked a lot. The shape on this glove is average. The laces are average. The design of this glove looks absolutely amazing, but for 420 bucks, the leather is just bad. But no matter what I think, just from holding this thing, breaking it in, we absolutely have to take ground balls to see how it performs. It's kind of funny. It's like super cold in here right now. Um, but this glove has like a generally wide opening. So my hand just slides off this thing because my hands are so slick. I'm trying to get sweaty and move enough to where I'll have like a better grip on it. That is like the most snow cone thing I've ever seen. Ice cream cone, yes. Now, 
as you guys know the ball glove king shorts have just been like blowing up lately you guys are a really big fan and we just dropped the winter shorts so these are like the valentine day shorts and these i'm just calling our snow shorts such a big fan of these they both turned out great they're on the website now the truth is i don't like hate the way it feels i'm kind of surprised because uh when we were playing catch i actually really didn't like it like it kept getting balls that would sink all the way back in the web and like sling it backwards i'm not trying to catch the ball up there i didn't break it in to be like that it's just sinking all the way up into the web um that's not necessarily good i'm like not a fan of it. so as i'm taking ground balls it feels like i'm actually using my hand to field the ball like catching the ball like this not just like using the web so i have a feeling that as soon as i try going two in the pinky it's just going to be a ton of that like deep web don't feel the ball at all kind of a thing let's find out that felt fine see okay that's what i was talking about though that's what i'm talking about when i'm saying it's like taking the web and just slinging it back uh, it makes it feel like really whippy like it hits your glove and goes Wah! that's simply from like not great lacing and it also just means that they didn't lace it up super tight i'm gonna give you my final thoughts when it comes to just fielding with the glove so first things first for how long i've had this glove it's already really loose and the laces are also loose so that just means this glove does not have a very long uh lifespan it's gonna be short it's not gonna last super long realistically like one or two high school seasons and you should probably be moving on <sighs> i wasn't expecting to say this but uh performance wise this glove is not great but with that being said nobody should act like it's a piece of trash or it's not worth it uh you just got to know that you're spending your money on some flash you're not spending your money on like performance it is in no way the worst glove out there it is in no way the best.